Hello, um, I'm George Herman and I am the teacher for uh, Painting One, that's Art 126, and also Painting Two, which I believe is Art 127. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do today in this video is talk a little bit about the supplies that you should have for the class um, and uh, go over what those are all about and talk a little bit about uh, paint, acrylic paint versus oil paint and so on. And then in the following video, um, I'll show you uh, a little demonstration of uh, mixing color and talk about how that goes and why that's important and so on. Um, so that's the agenda for these first two videos. Um, so in terms of, well again I always find that I have to backtrack here and talk a little bit about why we're using the open acrylic paints uh, for this class. Um, it, the traditional painting medium is oil paint um, and I use that a lot myself. Um, and that goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, and uh, oil paints is a wonderful medium. Um, they take a long time to dry. Um, and for a variety of reasons, uh, the, you know, some people feel like you shouldn't use them in a classroom because of the paint thinner and various uh, additives and so on. Um, the flip side of that is uh, acrylic paints. And uh, acrylics uh, came about, I'd say, around 70 years ago or so. Um, and those are water-based paints as, it, as compared to uh, oil-based. Um, and they, compared to the oils, um, dry a lot slower. Um, so some people prefer the oils, some people prefer the acrylics. You can do different things with them. Um, what I've begun to use and what I've used over the last few years for my classes is something called open acrylics. And you can see here, open. Um, and this is an acrylic paint, it's a water-based paint, um, but the drying time is a lot slower. So uh, you can actually do some of the things that you're able to do with oil paints, um, and yet they're water-based, so they clean up with water. Um, so somewhat less toxic than oil paints potentially. Um, and I found that for my classes, these have worked really well. Um, so that's why we're using the acrylic paints. Uh, and again, I'll just go down this list that I have, the supply list on the syllabus, which you should have, um, and just talk a little bit about the supplies that we're using here. And so the first thing that I mentioned there is the uh, open acrylic gel. Um, and this is the painting medium um, for acrylic paints, particularly for the open acrylic paints. And by painting medium, I mean uh, this is what you can mix the paints with um, in order to extend the paints and to thin it out, to make it more manageable, again, depending on how you use it. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that and how that's used. Um, Let's see, uh, the colors, I have the color list here. In general, the more colors you have with you um, and that you have at your disposal, um, the greater the range of colors you can mix and you can make and you can use. Um, so obviously more colors is good. Uh, what I've listed here is sort of a basic list of, um, of colors, uh, which you should have, and that includes um, reds, blues, yellows, uh, something called yellow ochre, that's another important color. Um, and for the most part, um, you can get these two ounce tubes of, uh, of paint and that will be fine for what you're doing this semester. Some people like to get a larger tube of titanium white. Um, you can do that, um, but again, not necessarily. Uh, and the brand that I'm showing you here is Golden Paints. Golden is a uh, uh, firm that makes uh, paints and painting materials, and they make a particularly good um, version of this open acrylic paints. So if you're able to get the Golden acrylics, then that's good. If not, there are other brands too that you can use. Um, so again, that's the colors I'm listing here. Um, brushes, you know, I always say uh, get a variety of brushes. 
um, in terms of size. And uh, you know, you'll find if you go to the art supply store that um, brushes can be very expensive if you really get the high end kind. I don't think you need to do that necessarily. Um, and uh, but the important thing is uh, brushes that you can use for acrylic paints. Um, you know, some will say use for acrylic, some will say use for oils, uh, and some will just say um, can use for any sort of paints. Um, and uh, you know, I would say get brushes that are anywhere from maybe a half inch. That's probably about what this is wide um, to something that's this is an inch and a half across. Um, and you know some sizes in between that. Um, if you want to get something a little smaller than this, you can. If you want to get something a little larger, you can. Um, this brush uh, I just got at the hardware store. Excuse me. So when you get the larger brushes, particularly um, if you just get a decent sort of house painting brush, that would suffice for what we're doing here. Um, let's see, and then a variety of other things. You'll want some cups or little tins or little jars, anything to uh, put water into um, and to clean the brushes. Um, I just use these little plastic cups and those are fine. Um, rags, uh, you know, I cut up old t-shirts and use those. Those make perfect rags. Um, you know, you can buy a bag of rags. You can buy um, shop towels, which are heavy duty paper towels, and those are fine also. Um, the palette that you use to mix the paints, um, I use a uh, disposable paper palette, which is fine and works for me. Uh, comes in a pad of 20 or 40 or so uh, sheets. Um, you could probably use a pane of glass. You can, there's sometimes wood palettes that are used for, uh, for mixing paints. Um, the only thing you don't want to get that some of my students have brought in is this little round plastic container with little holes around it. Um, and that's really for watercolors. And that really doesn't work for this kind of painting, for painting with oils or acrylics. So don't get that one. Um, a palette knife and wherever I put my palette knife, over here, it's in hiding. Um, and the kind I would suggest, it could be plastic, it could be metal as this one is. Uh, it should have a little bend in it like this does um, because that makes it much easier to mix paint and when using it as a painting tool to apply paint. Um, gesso, um, that uh, comes in varying sizes, this is something I happen to have. Uh, gesso is the material um, that coats the painting surface, that basically seals up the painting surface, whether it's canvas or wood or, um, or linen or whatever, and makes it uh, so that the paint won't just sort of seep into the canvas. Um, and you'll find that uh, if you want to reuse some old canvases that you have, um, you could take the gesso and brush over the old painting and then reuse it. So that's one thing that uh, the gesso would be good for. Um, if buying canvases uh, to use, um, a lot of students, this is the least expensive version, is a canvas board. Um, and you can get them in various sizes. And I'll talk later about the preferable size for you to use. Uh, this is a small one that I happen to have. This already comes pre-primed, pre-gessoed, um, so you wouldn't have to put uh, gesso on it. Um, you know, there's another type of surface which is stretch canvas, and that's what this is, which is uh, stretched, um, it comes in bolts of canvas, and is stretched around these wooden, wooden stretchers. Um, and again, you can get those, you can get sort of less expensive versions, or these are heavy duty um, stretchers, so this is a little more expensive. Um, but again, yeah, anything that works for you in terms of a, a painting service is fine. Um, and then I list here just a few other things, uh, you know, that aren't necessary, but you just might find that they're helpful occasionally. Uh, just tools uh, to sketch with, pencil, charcoal, a little uh, pad, drawing pad or something. Um, because you might want to do some sketching before you do the painting, and that's sort of optional. 
Um, so I think that sort of covers the supply list. And um, what we're going to do is I'll end this video right now. And the next video, I'll talk about actually mixing paint.